Simon Clark has won a stage of the Tour de France. What a day it was. You know, we've gone in many breakaways and we have had many attempts at trying to win Grand Tour stages. And, uh, you know, I don't know what number breakaway this was for me in terms of hunting Grand Tour stages, but to have this one come off the way it did was just incredible. And to watch it back now is just, you know, a dream come true that everything went right on one day. We're now at 5.6k to go. We've just come off the last sector. There's only myself, Edvold Bossenhagen, Taco Van Horn, Nielsen Palace, and then uh, his teammate, Magnus Court Nielsen, who's just done a big pull, and he's now 50 or so metres off the back with uh, halfway down the last sector. I said to myself, don't even think about the finish until you get off the last sector safely, because you know, you can puncture and anything can happen. Just over five kilometres to go when we got off the last sector, where I was like, right, game time. The chances of them catching us back in the last, that minute back in the last 5K were, were quite sw slim. So I knew that it was game time and uh, I had to get ready mentally to figure out how I was gonna win this sprint. <laughs> I get into this kind of zone state in situations like this where I just, everything becomes oblivious and I just block everything out and all I focus on is right, who I'm with, what's their game plan gonna be and how I'm gonna react to that. I knew someone was gonna go early, go long and I was 99% sure that was gonna be Palace and I was pretty sure Taco was going to keep a close eye on myself and so I knew I didn't have to watch Taco very close because I knew he'd be watching me and so then it was just up to me to keep an eye on either Boston Hagen and Paulus and hence why just before Paulus goes you can see me lining up on, on Boston Hagen's wheel. So I see, I see Nielsen go and I kind of twitch a second get ready in case Edvold does react um, but he chooses not to straight away and I said well you know what that's on you Edvold. <laughs> so, so I knew this corner was 800 metres to go this left hander and I was chilled until we got close to this corner. I thought if he doesn't go pretty soon, we're not going to catch Palace. It's might be hard to see from this behind camera angle, but if you see when we go through the corner, I actually gave, left him a couple of bike lengths gap. And if you see here, just after the pedestrian crossing, he looks back and he actually sees that I'm not like hard on his wheel. That was enough. I did that just to give him a bit of bait to think yeah. that he can get the jump on me. And, and he took it and he came out of that corner and hit it straight away. And obviously you see the gap between myself and Bosnagen, which is not ideal, but it's also a risk I had to take because he wasn't just gonna ride the two of us back to Nielsen Palace. So I tried to keep that distance where I'm still in his slipstream and getting a benefit, but I'm not hard on his wheel. So he looks back and goes, well, I'm not gonna just drag you back to Nielsen. And then as you see me catching uh, Palace here with 400 to go, we catch Edvold catches um, Paulus and I close in on Edvold and get on his wheel and then here we're at 350 and as we go past I purposely move here across onto Bossenhagen to kind of open the door for Taco. One to kind of make him think that I'm a bit cooked and that I don't have the sprint left and I'm across and he took the bait and went straight away. From then on it's just all out to the line and I knew I didn't have much of a sprint left at this stage and Taco was just going full noise and I actually counted. Now, I really only did 12 pedal strokes in the wind as late as possible and you know that was the difference between winning or losing. So you cross that finish line and you find out that you're the winner and it's suddenly all those sacrifices and all those hard moments over this winter and over the years suddenly become worthwhile you know just like that you know it's hard to hold that in you know there's a lot of hard yards this winter without it you know without knowing what my future was going to be but just believing that I was doing the right thing and that if I stick by my guns that someone would give me that opportunity and I'd be ready to take it with both hands.